Hello everyone. Um, my name is uh, Antoine Jomier. I'm the CEO of uh, Incepto, and I'm I'm very pleased to uh, host this webinar on behalf of uh, Subtle Medical tonight. Um, the uh, objective of tonight is to share with you the uh, the how AI tools uh, um, accelerated uh, and uh, low dose imaging uh, can really benefit uh, medical imaging and benefit your patients, and uh, to give you a European perspective. And I'm very pleased to be tonight with uh, two uh, exceptional speakers, uh, Dr. Alessandro Alessandro Rocacci and, and uh, Dr. Kathleen Waits for uh, this 45-minute uh, um, discussion. We'll be open to uh, questions. And um, before we start, I'd like to give uh, the opportunity to Kathleen and Alessandro to introduce themselves and uh, let you know uh, who they are. Kathleen, do you want to start? Yes, hello, good morning or good evening. I'm Kathleen Waits. I'm a nuclear medicine physician working at Beckless Cancer Center in Caen in France. Good Thank afternoon or good, or good morning. I am Alessandro Roncacci. I am a Roman radiologist, uh, as you can understand from my accent. And I am the chief medical officer of Afigra Group the pan-European leader provider in diagnostic imaging out of hospital patients and cancer care. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, th thank you for... Uh, and nice for to meet you, Kathleen. Yeah, likewise. Uh, thanks. Thank you both for your time, for, for joining us. Uh, you've both had the opportunity to work with uh, Subtle. Subtle is, is a pioneer in applying deep learning to uh, 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 medical image acquisition. Uh, and uh, enabling faster scan um, uh, with lower dose and smarter medical imaging. And uh, Subtel has already two products which are cleared, FDA cleared and CE marked, uh, Subtel PET and Subtel MR, and uh, a strong pipeline of product. And it will be a good opportunity to uh, see how this kind of solution can benefit your, uh, uh, your uh, uh, activity and ultimately your, your patients. Uh, but, but before we, we really get into the, 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 the detailed the discussion, I'd like to ask you a, a question, Alessandro. I think you attended uh, the European Congress of Radiology about 10 days ago. What, what were the main uh, topics on, on the Congress and any uh, was the AI discussed at the Congress? Okay, thank you very much for the question. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that it was impressive with the large participation of the international radiological, radiological community and industry and health services professionals. Uh, after COVID, uh, ECR 2023 was impressive in this regard. Uh, I was impressed by the new technologies in MRI with sequences accelerators uh, while maintaining the image quality in a CT with the introduction of the spectral imaging by different vendors, the introduction of remote scanning and support of uh, uh, the operations, the orchestrator to support the network radiologic activities and tools and medical device to increase patient safety and patient experience. I was impressed that how in these last three years, multi high solution platforms uh, involving OMs uh, and digital companies were represented at the Congress. More than 100 different uh, solutions and vendors uh, with promising uh, tools by clinical, operational, and commercial point of view. So I think that this is uh, something that is becoming disruptive in our sector. Mm. So yeah, a lot of... Uh... It's true, there was a lot of, of participation, close to more than 100 uh, companies. So we see that this, uh, this field of innovation is, uh, is here to stay and we're getting, and getting more and more space on the exhibition and more and more uh, traction uh, from the uh, uh, communication in the scientific session. Kat Kathleen, did, did you attend uh, ECR? So I didn't attend ECR 23, but I just uh, gave a look at the program and I noticed that AI was really one of the hottest topics, a real highlight with a broad range of scientific sessions dealing with AI, including machine learning, deep learning and big data. Mm. 
And also I saw, I saw that focus was being put on reminding us of the need for the ecological transition and how AI can contribute to this. Also in imaging by offering energy savings. Mm. So it's, Excellent. It seems interesting, but I wasn't there. <laughs> The, 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 in, in the uh, nuclear medicine community and in the nuclear medicine congresses, do, do you see the same uh, interest for artificial intelligence? Is there a lot of uh, exhibitors and a lot of sessions dedicated to this? Yeah, yeah, for sure. There is often, uh, for the past three years, it's, it's really growing the interest in AI, also in nuclear medicine, in a lot of different domains. So it can... Mm -hmm. Uh, improvement of image quality, aid in the uh, diagnostic. So it's it's only increasing, I, I would say. Thank you. And um, so you, you, you both uh, started project with uh, Subtle Medical. We will go into more details on how you've uh, led and how you've uh, managed those, those projects. Can you step back a little bit and, and tell us when, before you even started, what were your, um, your main uh, objective uh, in implementing artificial intelligence? What were your expectations and how you've been uh, managing it? Uh, Kathleen, can you start please? Yeah, uh, actually our primer, primary goal was first to improve pet image quality in obese patients, decrease noise and uh, to ease the physician's interpretation of PET scans. And then second, uh, an objective was to increase PET acquisition speed and thus decrease acquisition uh, time, allowing us to perform more PET CT scans on our various digital PET CT on a daily basis. Because the reason was that we were facing an increasing demand and need for PET CT examinations with often a too long delay for patients to have their scan scheduled. Uh, so that was a very important goal. And also for gallium 68 labeled radio pharmaceuticals, we were looking for the possibility to lower injected activity while maintaining PET image quality which was actually needed at the end of the generator's lifespan in order to keep responding to the clinical demand. And also as a second step, we were even able to both decrease activity and acquisition time during the whole generator's lifespan. Mm -hmm. A third objective uh, was to increase patient's comfort by decreasing scanning time and, and also radiation dose uh, from gallium 68. Hmm. So a very uh, very clear and broad objective. So uh, improving uh, improving image quality for a complex patient, improving patient throughput to be able to offer more slot uh, in in uh, an exam where there are long waiting lists uh, in 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 your uh, region and in France, and third uh, the ability to. Uh, uh, um, uh, use uh, leverage uh, new tracers, which are expensive, uh, with the ability to uh, open up your uh, activity to these new tracers. Uh, Alessandro, on your side, what were your uh, objectives prior to start uh, this uh, subtle project? Yes, let me give you a, a background about our experience uh, at AFIDE after three years of experience in introduction and adoption of the more than 10 different AI solutions in 40 centers and in across nine countries. Uh, the, the, the goals that we want to achieve are, first of all, improving uh, diagnostic practice uh, due to more uh, an, obje an, ob an objective diagnosis and uh, the automation of the, of the tasks. Second, uh, to bring operational benefits uh, with the, positive impact on the workflow, uh, on the workload, time saving, uh, and more consistent reporting across radiologists uh, and uh, uh, making these uh, av uh, available to uh, all the, uh, the areas in which you work. And third, improving patient and medical outcomes and their experience during the imaging examination as Kathleen described. Based on this uh, preliminary analysis, uh, uh, I have to tell you that 
uh, we created a multi-professional team with experts in clinical, operational, IT, legal, data protection areas in order to make the preliminary assessment of the product. And we introduce the products across the organization uh, in order to then reach the clinical, operational, business impact. Uh, I have to say that another topic that we touch is the reputation of our uh, partners. And in this regard, with Subtle Pet uh, and with Subtle Medical, we found uh, a very good relationship that uh, we have in place uh, since uh, two and a half years. So this is the preliminary uh, assessment of the AI selection. And uh, I have to tell you that then, uh, with regard to the implementation of the solution, we implemented the solution in uh, one reference center in Torino, IRMET where we have a three pet CT, we are center of excellence for northwest area in Italy, where we perform pet CT examination and subtle uh, has been very, very impactful in terms of uh, outcomes. Mm. Excellent. So uh, we, we see all the methodology you bring at your, because of, uh, for a network of your size, I think you have like a, more than 300 centers, uh, you have put up a methodology to assess the AI solution, which are meaningful for you. You've detailed your, your, your clear objective and you've selected uh, 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 one site. And then you also had, uh, uh, work on the, the reputation and the clinical evidence on uh, subtle prior to, uh, prior to start. Um, then yes. And let me, let me tell you also that it, it's very important to create this kind of relationship because we know very well that we need the champions on the ground in order to support the implementation of the solution. But it's also important to have a, a very strong partnership with the vendor in order to understand and to assess the clinical IT aspect and operational aspect that can really can fly this. And, but then later I will give you uh, some highlights about the, the results that we achieved with Sapton. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And, and on your side, Kathleen, did, did you make any diligence on prior to work with uh, Subtle, Subtle and Incepto? Did, did you add prior uh, assessment of these, these two companies? Obviously, in this field of uh, artificial intelligence, a lot of the companies are young, um, not necessarily known before you start working with them. What was your process on your side? Uh, actually, it was for us, it was very important to find an end to end solution, which was FDA approved and CE labeled. And actually, it was our physicist, Thierry Jodet, who went looking for a denoising solution. And back then in 2020, he found Septal Pets to be the only CE validated solution. So uh, it started all there, and then he uh, he tested septal pet first on an anthropomorphic phantom, comparing it to several conventional denoising methods like Gaussian filtering and more complex denoising methods like uh, wavelet denoising. And he actually found this AI solution to be uh, the most performant and accurate. And mm. after. We started, we asked to test it on three local patient examinations. Then we, uh, we did, we had a one month uh, trial period during which we performed a larger prospective clinical research validation study. And in this study, besides performances in terms of image quality, lesion detection and quantification, we also evaluated technical performances and actually the, the ease to use Subtle Pet, its implementation, the use in daily practice, its processing time. Uh, so um, we evaluated all this. this uh, I will speak about this later on. But so it, it, was, it was very successful, this mm. research study. Excellent. Can, can, can you tell us a little bit more about the, the because you have a very, uh, uh, very good paper that has been uh, uh, published and uh, accepted. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the methodology you've, you've used and the main results from your uh, publication? Yes, our biggest publication uh, was one in the European Journal of Nuclear Medicine and uh, Molecular Imaging. 
and we investigated whether we could have FDG Pets acquisition time. And so uh, with our protocol, it's on average uh, from 12 to six minutes pet acquisition time and uh, the whole pet CT duration uh, taking into account also installation and disinstallation of patients, shifting from 22 to 16 minutes, and we inject three megabecquerel per kilogram FDG. And in this study, we included 195 patients, which 836 lesions in full duration PET. And we obtained very positive results showing that subtle PET was able to restore degraded image quality of half duration FDG PET to a level similar to full duration PET. And, um, and this with 98 concordance rate in lesion detection between full duration and AI enhanced half duration PET, and also with very little modification in quantification of lesions and the reference liver. For instance, in lesions, we obtained uh, no significant difference in all one compliant lesion SQL peak, and, and also less than 4% in standard SUL peak while analyzing all study lesions. So it was really very little, very little modification in uh, SUL values. So that's, that was all very positive. And also uh, the denoising was 100% was successful and the, the processing time was within two minutes. So on average, it was, 90 seconds, so it's really fast, and, and this is really compatible with clinical routine. Mm -hmm. uh, very, uh, very impressive uh, results, and uh, it, it's so important to bring the clinical evidence uh, uh, measuring the impact in terms of uh, uh, patient uh, scan time uh, duration, as well as the quantitative uh, uh, validation uh, that it has no impact on the SUV measurement. And I know your, your, your paper has been a, um, a turning point into the, the, the community of uh, nuclear medicine for the validation of subtle PET. I know, uh, Alessandro, you've, you've conducted similar type of study at, um, at uh, AFIDEA. Can you tell us a bit more about your, your work and the paper you've published? Yes, with pleasure. First of all, uh, we did a, a three months uh, clinical trial. We defined the clinical operational business KPIs in place. Then we, uh, we validated subtle PET in a structured way through three clinical phases. The first phases was uh, uh, with regard to uh, reduced dose uh, in FDCG administration. Uh, we worked with 60 patients assessed. We achieved 33% of those uh, reduction. Uh, we worked uh, with 10 different pathologies and three different scanners. And we pad published this work uh, on European Journal of Nuclear Medicine. The second phase was a uh, uh, focus on uh, reduced time. Uh, again, uh, we assessed uh, 60 patients. We achieved a 50% of scan time reduction. And then in the third phase, we uh, worked with the combination between uh, reduced time and reduced dose. Uh, we uh, assessed 40 patients and uh, we worked with 33% uh, of the DG dose uh, reduction. And, uh, 50% and 25% of scan time reduction. In this case, uh, we uh, uh, found a very good compromise between 33% of the FDG uh, reduction and 25% of the scan time re reduction. What we achieved in these uh, uh, three studies? No difference in image quality between the native scans and scans with the 33% of the FDG dose reduction. And it is very important because it gave us, uh, for sure, increased the safety of the patient, but increased also the uh, operational efficiency of the company. Then we didn't find any kind of difference between the native scans and scans with the 50% of scan time reduction. 
And again, if we wanted to improve the operational efficiency in the countries where we have very strong wait, uh, waiting lists or no cap in the NHS quota to, uh, for the production, it was very effective as uh, accelerator, let me say. So in this case, comfort for the patient and the increase of productivity. Mm. And in the combination of the two, we found, as I told you before, 33% of uh, FDG uh, dose reduction with 25% of scan time. So in both of the cases, again, comfort of the patient, safety for the patient, and the increase of productivity. Uh, we worked with success with the uh, IRMET team uh, that was dedicated to this, and I think, and uh, we extended these uh, projects uh, across the organization, also in uh, uh, Poland and in Romania, uh, involving their local operations. So this best practice was shared also with the other countries. Excellent. Uh, so we, we really see the impact of this, uh, of this uh, AI technology applied to uh, acquisition. I feel it, it really gives you a lot of uh, degree of liberty uh, based on what your needs are, whether you need to improve, uh, make it shorter for your patient, or you need to uh, improve the operational efficiency, uh, and then based on uh, your uh, daily uh, uh, clinical usage, you, 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 you select uh, the right protocols and you use it uh, adequately. Um, if, if we go into the, uh, some of the people uh, listening to this webinar may have some question about is it easy to use? How uh, is it? Is it complex to install? Um, can you tell us more uh, about uh, uh, what it takes to install? Uh, Alessandro, do you want to take this question first? By technical point of view, uh, we didn't didn't have any kind of uh, problem. The IT architecture and the integration uh, of the AI solution to our systems. We worked directly with. Uh, uh, with the packs and I have to tell you that uh, also the um, our uh, uh, IT uh, team and uh, our operational team uh, was uh, absolutely uh, confident with the use of the solution. Uh, we didn't have uh, any kind of mistake in terms of the transmission of the uh, images uh, and also our clinical team uh, didn't uh, highlight any kind of uh, problem. It's very important this, why this? Because uh, we have to know that, uh, we have to consider every time that uh, it's true that we wanted to improve uh, clinical operational impact uh, uh, thanks to the introduction of the AI solution. But it's also important that it cannot be time consuming for our nuclear medicine doctors or for our radiologists. And so this was a very positive uh, in terms of uh, 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 operational efficiency. Mm. And as you said, I think you, you, you mentioned you had the, like three pets from three different vendors and you also mentioned Italy, Poland and Romania. So the, the, the installation and the implementation was uh, smooth for uh, all vendors and all type of setup, right? Absolutely. It depends in this case uh, only by the local organizations and uh, the uh, local volumes because uh, we know exactly that it depends and, and by the target that you want to achieve. Okay, great. And, and you, Kathleen, you, you're working in a, a large cancer center in, in France. How easy or how complex was it to, to install? Uh, so first we had to discuss with, um, with the IT team and so they just insisted on the fact that we should use a local server. But uh, when that was implemented, we had no problem at all with installation, uh, implementation, and, and, and use afterwards. Um, so we have, it, it's running on a standard PC. I, I don't know all the technical details, but it's really a very common GPU, GPU card, so uh, nothing particular. And it's, it's even with that, it's, it's really fast. So within two minutes, we have, it's a completely automatic workflow and we have denoise images returned within two minutes. Mm, excellent. So it looks like uh, there is uh, no excuse to, uh, no excuse to, to, to uh, start. It's been uh, validated. Uh, 
by your work and by a, a, a larger community. It's not that it's very easy to, to install. And, and, and maybe now in routine use, uh, do you uh, see the benefits you were uh, um, uh, highlighting from your research? Uh, uh, you've been using it for more than uh, 18 months, uh, probably two years for you, Kathleen. Do you feel that impact now in your, uh, in your daily practice? Uh, yeah, actually, in our daily practice, we were able to add up to five patients each day. So it's, it was 5% wow. of the patient number and while keeping the same time slot. So uh, that's, that's okay. And what is really uh, also a, a, an advantage is that we can be more flexible in case of problems. So uh, for instance, patient or a pharmaceutical delay, camera failure, so that's really more comfortable. And uh, now we use it with several pet radio pharmaceuticals. So as I mentioned, FDG, but also with fluorinated choline, fluorinated PSMA, and we want to start with fluorinated uh, DOPA. And uh, just to mention, we both lowered injection injected activity from 150 megabecquerels. We had a fixed uh, activity before. And uh, that became uh, 1.5 megabecquerel per kilogram. And we also halved uh, pet acquisition time. Mm. Um, I, I, yeah, go ahead. Uh, next to that, the business case is, is clearly positive in, in France. Um, I know that in each country, it's, it's, it's variable due to different pet city reimbursement and, and also pet city demand, ready pharmaceutical cost. And also the capacity of your team, I guess, uh, for absorbing increased rhythm when you increase uh, imaging speed. And also very important that you need to be aware of is that you need to dispose of sufficient injection boxes if you do that, uh, preferably at least five. Um, and we already had, it, had that in our, in our center, so that's okay. And globally, uh, we are the nuclear medicine physicians and, and also physicists are satisfied with, with image quality. And what about the technologies? So uh, we expect that they would have perhaps more time for patients, but actually as working rhythm was increased, uh, we needed to engage uh, an extra technologist to, to manage this. And I must say, often they speed up uh, even more. And uh, in that case, uh, it's, it's also positive. If everything goes well, we can even finish the day uh, ahead of schedule. schedule. And that is really more often than, than in the before AI period, I should say. And, mm. and comfortable for everyone. And also patients, it's very important. They feel more comfortable with, with shorter acquisition time. Yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, thank you for this, this feedback. I, I think beyond the, the science and research work that you've been uh, uh, leading, we see that uh, on a day to day basis, this has an, some impact for your patient, for your technologies, for your uh, uh, nuclear medicine team. And it's very, uh, um, very exciting. I like very much also because I'm getting it from a lot of uh, nuclear medicine doctors, this feedback about uh, in nuclear medicine, logistic is so important that if you have a delay in the, the, the de delivery of the tracers, it, it has an impact for you operationally. And the fact that you're using Subtol, you, you mentioned it, can help um, by getting, getting an acquisition faster or compensating some of the logistic issue. And we've seen a lot of this uh, feedback uh, on, the, uh, on the, the value of a, a solution like uh, Subtol PET. So it's a... Uh, I, I, I really must tell you that for us, a uh, company working on this solution and trying to put them uh, uh, in the field uh, installed, seeing the impact is, su is super motivating. And, and, and what you just said is, uh, uh, goes uh, uh, in that direction. Alessandro, on your side, uh, the clinical uh, routine usage, uh, was it as convincing as, convincing as the research work you've been uh, doing? Yes, absolutely. It was very important also because we use this uh, technology uh, not only with the, the, the last technology, the, the, 
the last technologies, but also with the with all the three uh, equipments that we have in place, uh, we could be backup for the uh, local public and university hospital uh, when they were uh, replacing the, their equipment. So we increased the number of patients and thanks to the use of the solution, we could uh, answer the, uh, the demand and the allocation of their patients. Uh, our clinical team worked every day without any kind of uh, problem. And uh, uh, on top of this, uh, we have to say that uh, in time in which uh, we, are, uh, uh, we are called to replace our equipment, and during the COVID it was a problem, the fact that we can uh, uh, use maintaining image quality and operational e efficiency in uh, some PET C scanners that we were planning to replace was a big advantage because uh, uh, in that period the industry uh, had a, a slowdown in the production and delivery of the la latest generation equipment and so we made, we made longer the, the life of some equipment with the gold standard examinations. So I think that it was another big advantage. Mm. No, I, I, and, and, and I'd like to um, emphasize this point. I think this, this, this new AI solution and the solution like Subtle are delivered on, a, on a software as a service model so they can benefit uh, any vendor and they are not tied to uh, the introduction of a new scanner or a new technology. So it can benefit uh, older scans, PET scans that benefit the technology in a subscription mode. And I think this gives a lot of agility. And this is a new uh, way to access innovation in the, in, in the industry, because before the, uh, uh, any uh, innovation linked to acquisition was uh, linked to the scanner itself. And the easiest way to uh, benefit from it was when you were changing the system. And I, this, versus, this versatility is very, uh, very interesting. I think for, uh, for uh, all the, uh, the uh, imaging uh, provider. Um, thanks for this, uh, this feedback. Ne ne next question I wanted to ask you is uh, we, super convincing about these uh, benefits for your activity. Uh, and, and what are the patients saying saying about it? Do they do they see any difference? Do they say, do, do you let them know that they are scanned with a, a, an AI solution? And what's the patient experience? Kathleen, do you want to take that question first? Yeah, actually, uh, we haven't done a specific satisfaction poll comparing the before and after AI periods. But subjectively, we have had many positive feedback from patients because of shorter scanning times. And personally, I sometimes I, I explain to patients that now we have shorter scanning times because we use AI and that we have validated this in a, in a large study, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we don't we don't all always explain that to per, to to patients. Mm -hmm. But, but do you feel this uh, like a two time faster scan time make a difference for them in the end or, or not really? Yeah, I, I would say for most people, uh, patients, yeah, it's, it's obvious for patients who, are, who really have problems with uh, scanning time, like uh, sometimes they are, they, they have pain or they have dyspnea in, um, in, in this position. But uh, really also for other patients who are more comfortable, uh, they also are happy with shorter scanning times. Mm. It's not really, uh, yeah, it, it's easier to, to, to do it faster for everyone. Great. Alessandro, on your side, any, any feedback? Patient feedback was extremely positive. Uh, we have increased patient safety in, uh, in the case of FTG dose reduction and patient comfort in case of uh, scan time reduction. In both of the cases, we achieved the, the results while maintaining image quality. Uh, our patients uh, appreciated this and we informed them about the use of AI because we strongly believe that, that uh, we have to create the culture and the familiarity of the integration of AI solutions, not only across our organization with the involvement of our doctors, but also involving our referral doctors, 
and informing our patients because I think I strongly believe that in the next uh, three four years uh, it, it will be the routine in our operations and we need the feedback of our patients and referral doctors based on the results and based on the, their personal experience also because we have to consider that in one of the topic uh, as I told you of ECR International Congress in this moment is uh, the patient experience. We take care of this patient pathway and patient experience. They are central in this moment. We don't want to provide only examination, but we want to focus on, pa on patient-centric approach. Mm. Excellent. There, there was also one additional topic which I, I want to cover as part of our discussion was um, this uh, as companies, uh, you as a, a medical director of a large organization or a nuclear, as individual, we are getting more and more sensitive to uh, the, the, the small contribution we can make to uh, uh, lower our uh, uh, energy consumption, lower our carbon emission. And, 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 and this can be very tiny contribution as individual. This can be an uh, initiative at our company's level. And, and uh, we've been working uh, at Incepto, we've been working actively with, with Subtle, trying to, 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 to see to tangible impact on well, whether if you can do faster scan uh, uh, or if you can reduce those, probably you can have a, 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 a positive impact on the uh, overall uh, uh, energy saving and uh, uh, carbon emission reduction. Uh, is, is this uh, things that you've been uh, investigating in your uh, institution? Uh, we, at, between Incepto and Incepto, we're trying to, to make it, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to, to try to find right, the right balance to uh, uh, try to assess these benefits, not to, to do any uh, greenwashing and use this as a marketing uh, because this is, uh, this is fancy, but really trying to, 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 to assess the impact and I'm interested in your perspective in, on, this, uh, on this topic. Okay, thank you very much for the question. I am not able to say which was in detail the impact the, uh, on saving of uh, energy costs, but certainly we have to say oh. that the use of AI solution that uh, improve operational efficiency, like subtle PET, uh, the adoption of uh, exclusive programs like those excellence in which we reduce uh, the those administered in uh, to our patients according to the right examination the right clinical question is another topic in order to achieve the same uh, uh, results and the uh, adoption of uh, uh, another exclusive project that is MRI excellence in which we increase the number of examination in the same time or we reduce uh, the uh, scan time in um, M MR uh, examination is another topic uh, that allow us to achieve the fact that in the, in, in the impact in terms of uh, uh, energy cost can be contained or can, can be optimized. And we are very sensible about it. Thank you, uh, Alessandro. Kathleen, any insight on this? Yeah, I cannot add really much to what Alessandro said and what you uh, highlighted. Just that I'm personally preoccupied also by environmental questioning and I try to contribute to energy preservation each day. But like you said, it's important to do this at, at large scale and in collectivity. And um, yeah, the, the, the most obvious event advantage I'd say is that one might avoid the purchase of a new PET CT camera if you want to increase uh, the number of scans and that you can also spare use of free pharmaceuticals and increase imaging speed. And so that is, that is in that way ecological. Mm. Yeah, no. thanks for your, uh, thanks for your uh, answers. I think it's, uh, it push us us being a uh, subtle medical and incepto to, to bring more uh, tangible evidence of what the potential savings are, but uh, at least these are small steps that are going into the right direction. And um, I think we're, we're, we're reaching to the, um, to the end of this uh, webinar before we open up for, for question, but I, I'd, like, I'd, I'd like to open uh, to, to a last question. And, and before doing, doing so, I, I would like to say that um, 
uh, we've seen very convincing and providing uh, uh, results from uh, septal pet in your environment. Uh, we are uh, at Inceptor, we are lucky also to carry the septal MR product from uh, septal medical, which is the same type of technology. So a faster acquisition for MRI uh, or um, uh, better image quality for the same uh, uh, duration uh, with denoising uh, AI technologies. And uh, I must say that these uh, technologies are uh, very uh, uh, convincing. Uh, they bring a lot of uh, benefits to, and we see a, a, a very fast adoption also in the radiology uh, uh, space uh, with the MRI with the same kind of uh, benefit that you've been uh, mentioning. So uh, uh, faster acquisition time, uh, the ability to get better image quality, and, and, and benefits to the patient. Uh, so, uh, and so these, these are super convincing uh, evidence and, and results. And I think these are the first um, um, uh, very concrete uh, uh, and tangible uh, um, benefits of artificial intelligence applied to medical imaging. We know this is a, a big wave coming. So there are many solutions. Subtil has a, has a strong pipeline of solutions that are going to come in the in, in the next uh, in, the in the next coming months, coming years. How, how do you see that uh, that that wave of even innovation? What what does it uh, uh, inspires you uh, as a as a closing question? <laughs> Who wants to go first for this this one? <laughs> Oh, let I, I let me start. I think uh, I I'm not a gentleman. I start before Kathleen, but yes. let me tell you that uh, I think that some existing commercial solution uh, in AI are ready uh, to support radi radiologists or nuclear medicine doctor in their daily routine. Uh, as I told you before and uh, reducing the risk of errors uh, in reporting, reducing the times in the analysis of the examinations, uh, making, uh, as we discussed, uh, the operational efficiency and comfort for the patient. And uh, it is uh, necessary to integrate this in our systems and uh, to answer our specific needs. This is essential to make uh, our doctors familiar with the use of AI. There are some other existing commercial solutions that are not ready yet but we can give our contribute as institutions, as a, a private or, or a university or public uh, uh, hospitals in order with our clinical and operational team in order to improve this and co-finalize, co-develop the solution in order to make them really feasible for our needs. And there are also uh, thanks to also our professional activity, but also with the, uh, our data sharing, that it can be very useful to improve the solutions. Uh, if we will work in these two directions, to use the commercial uh, existing solutions that are already impactful and to support the digital company in order to co-develop or co-finalize something that is promising, but it's not ready, in the next five years, I'm confident that AI will be able really to support the human intelligence in diagnostic imaging, so in radiology or in nuclear medicine, because this is the goal that we want to achieve. That's my perspective and my uh, wish. Excellent. Thanks, uh, Alessandro. Kathleen, uh, any, anything to add to this human, how AI is going to improve the human intelligence? For sure. Yeah, I think uh, for AI to be embraced and adopted at, at scale, we obviously need easy plug and play AI tools. And I also think that that over time, people will become more familiar and more, more confident with AI. And then it's really very exciting in the meantime to seize the opportunity to educate ourselves on this topic so that it will become less of a like a black box. And we also see that, that the use of AI in other domains than imaging or, or even medicine is becoming more widespread and, and more in, in, in routine. And, and also this can, uh, this sets an example. Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Kathleen. Thank you, Alessandro. I, I think it was a very um, 
very good discussion, very exciting. And I think you, just as a conclusion, taking your, your, your key words, uh, I, I think this uh, AI uh, uh, is, is really here to stay. Uh, it can be taken at scale if we do it together. To, together me, meaning, uh, um, well, exactly the setup we have here today, like uh, you are leading large clinical institution, you are, you, you are doctors, we are with Subtle Medical, who is one of the leading pro, uh, developer of AI solution for uh, image acceleration. And at Incepto, we try to, to bring it in the end of the clinician and, and, and uh, do the clinical validation, the education. And by doing it together, we can leverage the commercial solution and we can take you uh, uh, and involve you in the development of, of the solution to bring uh, additional ones. And uh, this is a journey and this is a very exciting journey. And with that, I'd like to thank um, uh, Subtle Medical for the uh, opportunity to invite the, the, the three of us and the, uh, uh, the pleasure of uh, moderating this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Antoine. Thank you, Kathleen, uh, for uh, um, the, the discussion together. Thank you, Subtle Medical, uh, for uh, organizing this uh, event. Thank you so much. Thank you. I would like to thank Subtle Medical for their invitation and, and their collaboration to make this AI adventure work. And all this, of course, via Incepto, who is providing Subtle Pet to us in France and other European countries. And also, I would like to thank also in particular our whole and uh, great team at the Nuclear Medicine Department of Bacles, who will make it work. Excellent. Uh, now we are re really uh, we acknowledge the benefit it can offer in terms of optimization of use of, of our imaging equipment and for patients by decreasing scanning time, radiation dose, and um, and waiting lists. Great. And uh, now it's time for question. So uh, now we open it. If you have any question, you can ask it uh, on the chat. I think. We have a we have a first question uh, for Kathleen uh, for you Kathleen I think it's it's a question about um, uh, the, the the while you conducted your study uh, did you have different type of uh, uh, of uh, morphology different type of BMI for the the subject to the the study uh, yes I can answer that. So in our biggest study of uh, prospective study of 195 patients, our the BMI of these patients, uh, the median value was 26, and it ranged from 15 to um, six, uh, 46 kilogram per square meter. Uh, and a bit more in detail of, of this, in these patients, 46, 24% were obese with a BMI of at least 30. Um, 58, 30 percent were overweight with BMI of at least 25, and the remaining 40, um, 46 percent were normal weight or underweight. And we analyzed uh, that BMI was not found to be a predictor of a lesion SUL max bias superior to 10 percent in uh, multivariable logistic re regression analysis. And actually, we were we are interested and will further analyze visual uh, IQ scores, image quality uh, scores, and also the coefficient of variation in the liver according to body habitus in uh, in this population. Hmm. So a, a thorough analysis on this uh, on this side. Thank you for your answer. The second question I can read. Thank you for the question. <laughs> yes, the second question I can read on the chat is uh, is maybe more for you, uh, Pravin. Uh, Pravin is a clinical scientist at Acceptor, and I, we always get that question. What what's the magic recipe uh, with the Acceptor uh, pet algorithm? What are the type of uh, data set you have for training? That what are the training methods? Can you tell us more without uh, maybe uh, sharing the magic recipe, but to, to understand what's behind the, uh, the application? No, absolutely. And uh, just to add on to Kathleen's point, the performance um, of our models comes from the training and validation that we do. And uh, we take great care in training our models based on the real world 
like you know patient demographics that we see and also the various traces various scanner models so that when we deploy these methods they are generalizable and they work out of the box and all that work that you put into making them work uh, is what subtle brings to the table hmm. great thank you um, there is a question from Valentina on the, um, how does Subtle MR compare to a vendor solution, the GR Recon or the Siemens Deep Resolve? So I, I, can, I can give a first answer to, to this one and, and then Pravin, you can complement uh, if you will. But um, I think the, uh, in terms of um, um, the, the, the value proposition and the impact of the technology, they, they, they clearly... Uh, um, um, uh, uh, very uh, comparable and uh, um, um, and they, even I, I think the beauty is that it's a multi-vendor solution uh, applying to any type of scanner from any uh, any vendor and uh, we've at Inceptor we've even installed a subtle MR on a new MR system that had the GR Recon and we've seen that it is uh, complementary, uh, so you can even combine both. Uh, and um, this is a advanced uh, advanced usage, but uh, very convincing about uh, well, the, the the clinical value of subtle MR. Uh, Pravin, maybe you want to to to, to complement and also give yeah. your perspective on Siemens. I know there is a specific uh, approach also with Siemens. Yeah. Um... Overall, like you know, the vendor solutions are based on raw data, whereas we are DICOM-based uh, products. So we are vendor agnostic and also model agnostic. Some of these uh, latest technologies are only available on the latest scanner, whereas subtle products can be used with any scanner model. Uh, mm -hmm. That's one. And number two, uh, we are going to be on Siemens OpenAI platform, tightly integrated in their scanner itself. Um, that's a collaboration that Siemens realized is uh, of value to them to bring AI models that are vendor agnostic on their platform as well. Hmm. Thanks, Pravin. We now have a question from uh, Yassin Bouchareb from uh, the UN... Uh, the from Oman and this question is about the um, potential impact of AI based reconstruction on the overall image quality and potentially affect removing some of the artifact and some of the imaging features so I think that's a great question for uh, Kathleen and Alessandro because you've been conducting your studies to really assess that so can you uh, give an answer to uh, Yasin? Um, it's actually, thank you, it's a very good question. We, we didn't specifically address in our analysis um, artifacts, the impact on artifacts, just uh, subjectively, daily uh, routine. Uh, if there are image motion artifacts, they will normally, they, they will stay. Uh, it's, it's more like maintaining image quality compared to full duration uh, native pet. So um, normally they will keep them. Uh, an advantage is just that if you if you perform faster your, your image acquisition, then in general you have less artifacts, motion artifacts. So that's that can, that's really a, an advantage. That's yeah. why we see them less now, now that we halved pet acquisition time. Yeah, absolutely. And just to add on, um, uh, for example, we as a company emphasize a lot on doing these um, independent clinical evaluations of our products, like how Dr. Weitz and uh, Dr. Ronkachi did um, in their own environments, where like you know we are deploying our products, and the whole purpose of this clinical evaluation and the publication is to prove to the wider community that image quality and diagnosis will not be affected. So that is the reason why we have a long list of publications evaluating our products, because we know 
that this is a question that we need to answer and um, put it out there for people to kind of digest the facts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alessandro, any uh, additional? Yes, comments? thank you very much for the question. Uh, in addition to what Katrina said, we had experience uh, with the, the the, 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 the reduction, uh, um, we have data experience with the reduction of the FDG administration. And I have to say that in this regard, absolutely, uh, the image quality was uh, uh, comparable with the native uh, uh, images. And I have to tell you that in, this, uh, in, the routine, in the routine activity, in this moment, we don't have any kind of difference between the the, the examination that we acquire with um, normal uh, scan time and uh, with the uh, uh, not the reduction of the uh, FDC, FDG administration. So in this regard, absolutely, uh, it's, it's, it, it became part of our daily activity without any kind of difference. And in terms of impact by referral doctors, uh, we didn't have any kind of mistake or discrepancy that was uh, uh, highlighted during our uh, activity in these uh, couple of years. Mm. Thank you, Alessandro. And I think we 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 are just we just passed the hour, so I think it's it's going to be a, as a closing question a, a good question on uh, we had a question on Scepter Gad. Uh, so Scepter Gad is is a. Uh, the, the next products uh, of uh, of Scepter Medical, so I think it's a good uh, a good uh, way to close on this webinar by talking a little bit about what's coming and and your roadmap. Uh, so Pravin, if you can uh, tell us more, and and this will be the last question. Sure. So Subtle Gad is a product that we are uh, working hard to bring to market. The goal is to enhance very low dose gadolinium enhanced scans so the goal is to reduce the dose of injected gadolinium contrast agents uh, the current status of that is we are conducting a very big clinical trial with a pharma company who manufactures gadolinium uh, based or contrast agents and as and when the like you know regulatory bodies blessed for its clinical efficacy and diagnostic equivalence will be bringing that to market and on top of subtle gad we are also working on a portfolio of products that are always geared towards our motto of faster safer and uh, you know smarter imaging uh, be it in the world of uh, acquiring faster images or lower dose across modalities so that's what our product portfolio for the future is going to be mm. well thank you so faster safer smarter i think these are the a nice way to uh, close this uh, webinar uh, thank you all for your um, participation thank you for your attention special uh, thanks to the to the uh, speakers tonight and uh, and uh, hope to see you soon Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.